All right, it's hard to uh, to really know where to begin with this next story because, frankly, it is infuriating. I think it's disgusting, complicated. It's going to leave you with a lot of questions. I still have some myself. It's about the former chief of Westlands Police Department, Terry Timmius, and a report that claims while he was a police officer in Laco, he slept with a drug informant. He asked to be invited to live sex shows between female detainees. And look, the list goes on and on. We're going to touch on all of it, okay? Timmius. His name probably at this point sounds familiar to you. It was in the news lately. We've been talking about it here on the story. We told you how back in 2017, Timmius and a bunch of his police buddies, they arrested the guy you just saw on the screen there on some made up charges. They were doing it as a favor for a friend, apparently. Now, the guy that they arrested just settled with the city of Westland for about $600,000. Now, that situation got people so fired up that all kind of stuff started coming out, bubbling to the surface like this report. Now, again, this report is filled with accusations from Timmius's time as an officer in Lake Oswego. This is before we got the chief job in West Lynn. So the timeline, it gets a little complicated. So let's walk through it for just a second. Timmius worked as a police officer in Lake O for like 18 years. Then in 2005, West Lynn hired him for the chief job. Then three years after that, in 2008, a former colleague, a Lake O cop comes forward with these accusations of sex on the job and other things. So West Lynn then hired an investigator to do this report. Now, let's bring in Kristen Severance. You took a look at this report. Mm -hmm. Let's just start with the basics. Uh, what's in it? A lot. 100 page report. There are 17 allegations. So West Lynn hired this former police chief of McMinnville to do the report, and he kind of lists out the allegations as sustained, meaning he thinks they happened right. partially sustained, meaning, you know, kind of some half truths in there right. and then something where, yes, he believes it happened, but he doesn't believe it's improper and then like unfounded. He can't say if it's true or not true. So let's talk about what he thinks is true. Okay, and there again, there is so much in this report, but the one thing that the investigator says happened is these two Lake Oswego police officers pulled over two women uh, for a DUI. The two women, they start hooking up. The police officers call Timmius and say, you know, come here, you, you have to see this. He is not available. Later on, he says, if that ever happens again and you don't get a hold of me, you know, to come, uh, I'm gonna make sure you're fired. And he's the boss. He is. And this is true. The, the investigator found this to be something that happened. And he didn't. He said that Timmius should have reprimanded those officers. All right, let's talk about half truths or maybe some things that the investigator found to be true but not improper. Right. So these are things the investigator exactly said were true but not improper. He said that Timmius um, had a relationship with another Lake Oswego a city employee. And then he also said that, you know, uh, Timmius and other officers were accused of using just very derogatory terms. Like racist yeah. type stuff. Exactly. Uh, and then the, the stuff that wasn't sustained, so he couldn't tell if it was true or not true. Exactly. And a lot of interviews. You, reading the full report, so many people were interviewed for this story. Mm. Um, and this one, it was Timmius showing up at a downtown Portland hotel with an informant that he was sleeping with. And then he got, gets in this big confrontation with a Portland hotel employee. All right. So... <laughs> What are we to make of all of this, right? I mean, this, this report's more than a decade old. Right, so it was done in 2008. The investigator sends it to West Lynn's city attorney. Uh -huh. The attorney reads it, writes a memo to city officials saying, you have to read this. They don't. They never read it. No. Got it. All right. Kristen Severance, thank you so much. You bet. Uh, again, we, we do want to highlight the fact that we can thank local journalism for busting this story wide open. Because back in 2009, a freelance journalist named Lee Vandervoo, she heard about this report and she requested it. But at the time, the city claimed attorney-client privilege. Because remember, as Kristen just said, they never read it. Only the city attorney did. But thanks to this mounting pressure recently and some good old-fashioned reporting, that report is now public. And even Vandervoo, who we talked to, never thought that the contents would be this bad. I'm still trying to get over the shock of finally reading this thing. It was far worse than I ever imagined. I can't believe that, that this persisted for so long when this conduct was, was so visible to, to the people that reported it and certainly the people that saw this investigation and the investigator.
Look, it's a 100-page report. It's been boiled down to different types of journalism. We gave you our version just now. You got the Portland Tribune version as well. This entire story is really worth your time. Lee Vandervu teamed up with Nick Budnick at the Portland Tribune, and they did some incredible journalism, and they helped blow the story wide open, frankly. So we're going to share this on our website, and hopefully you take some time to support some local journalism today. As you can see, it definitely makes a huge difference.